Dobro. The village elders and um, everybody present here this morning. I didn't know there was a village that existed here. But I must say you have a very small village and from the way you have uh, welcomed me and my team here, it shows you live in peace and unity. And that is very important. When we live in a village setting, it is very important that we live for each other, we assist each other and we be happy. No? So, um, <coughs> and I can see that here. The, to the women, uh, I'm here to tell you that uh, this <coughs> government cares for the women of the village. No Not only the village, across the country. And uh, over the last 12 or 13 years, we have been supporting a lot of women's groups. And we understand that it is important that you look after your families as well as earn a little bit of income. Why? being uh, within your homes and looking after your children. And I'm sure you're sending all your children to school and <coughs> education is very important for our government and our Prime Minister. We give a lot of budget towards education. So please, if your children are of the schooling age, it is the responsibility of the parents to see that they go <coughs> to school. The reason being, education is a life changer. <coughs> What you have today, what you don't have today, tomorrow is going to be different if our children are going to be educated. Hmm? And I always tell people about my story, <coughs> how education <coughs> changed my life, you know. My mother used to tell me, even if you don't have enough to eat today, you have to get educated. She used to walk to school, no electricity, no shoes, no new bags and clothes, but she made sure that all my brothers and sisters into school. We used to walk to school. We used to cross rivers in the rainy season, get wet, but we would never miss school. Okay? So education really changes a person's life. Today you may say, oh, I don't have a big house, I don't have a car, I don't have money. But what's going to happen is when your children grow up, they're going to get educated, they're going to travel the world, they're going to get good jobs, and they will support you. So teach your children values of hard work, please. You can't teach them anything, teach them to work hard. Teach them to respect you. So when they grow old, they don't forget you. <coughs> see, you, you will see that Ministry of Women has a lot of uh, senior citizens under their care. We look after the old people's home. And the reason being, the children don't care for them when they grow old. Okay? So you don't want to be old and then your children chase you out of the house. So the values, okay? teach them to respect their grandparents. Teach them to respect you. And who does that? Us women. Okay? We women are entrusted with that responsibility. So please, if you are grandmothers, if you are mothers, spend time with your children. Teach them good things. Teach them hard work. And I'm sure in the near future, this village will be one of a few villages where we don't have problems of youth crime, etc. These days, you should know where your children are. Who your children are with what time they leave for school, what time they come back. That's very important. Who their friends are. You should always know that there's always bad people around, right? Who's going to, who's going to teach your children bad things. So if you know where your children are, if you know who they are with and where they are, especially night time or school hours, uh, that's going to be very good for the children. So today uh, we are here with uh, a, a set of uh, kitchen uh, utensils that we are going to hand over to the women's group. And we hope, and we hope you women, women will look after it well. Sometimes when we give things out like that as a gift, you think, oh, it's free, then you can do anything. No. There are thousands of women's groups who want this yeah, utensils. But the Prime Minister's office has chosen you people. <coughs> so you are very special, eh? And this comes under the small enterprise, uh, the grant scheme, where through this, we want you to run a business, we want you to make profit, and we want you to invest more. 
So next time if we do come, I hope this is not the last time, we will see that your business has grown. Always ensure that you keep aside the profits. Not that you, you, uh, you're doing catering and you made a thousand dollar income and you spend all the thousand dollars. No. So we are giving you equipment that is going to assist you to run your businesses, staying at home. And of course you have to share that, right? <coughs> Unity is one thing. Normally when you start businesses, one goes this way, one goes that way. But please make sure that your whatever income generating project you are going to do, it remains <coughs> unified. Yeah. Uh, look after your books, look after your stuff, and of course always help each other in any village function or events. That's very important. Um, another thing that the ministry does is uh, we have a lot of programs where we help our poor people, where we help our children, where we help our women. So we have a social pension scheme program. If you are 65 plus, the ministry gives you a hundred dollar voucher, a uh, hundred dollars cash every month. If you are poor and you have problems uh, looking after your families, we have a poverty benefit scheme. So we have staff here. Afterwards, you can ask what all we have, and we will be of assistance to you. But uh, just just the last word of uh, caution, please look after your health. We have a lot of problems with health. Um, diabetes is on the rise, hypertension is there, and it all comes down to the fact on what we eat. Yeah? So we live in a, you, you guys are so lucky. We live in areas where there's hardly any soil to see, so we can't plant anything. You live in a village environment. Please plant your own food. Like bele, I love to see all this uto, bele, and popo, everything. And eat that. Eat that, right? So you don't have problems when you become old, especially old people. When we grow old, we get diabetes and hypertension. Then they cut our legs. In Fiji, uh, uh, the amputation, the leg amputation is very high. Almost every eight hours, somebody's uh, limb is cut off. And then after that, what is the problem? You need a wheelchair, you can't move. You, you just have to depend on your families to look after you. So why have a situation like that? Live healthy, exercise, eat healthy, and, and do things like that. Yamuna also is not very good, so cut down on Yamuna, please. Nobody, <laughs> not um, Of course. Uh, so ladies, your role is very important, right? To look after your family. I know you say, oh, a men's job too, but we ladies, traditionally, we have to look after our families because when they get sick, when something happens, it is our turn eh? to look look after our children and the men. So I, I know you're doing that, and uh, I hope you've registered for the elections. Please do register for voting, and uh, make your choice wisely when you when when you vote in the elections. Well, I'm not supposed to say anything more than that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back later, maybe. But today it's to celebrate the women. Please know that we see you, we hear you, we listen to you, and that's why we're here. And I'm glad I'm the first and the first one to be here. <laughs> and I wish I don't have to go back. <laughs> but I have my girls at the back, and back home I have to go to them. <laughs> but if you ask me to stay back, I will stay back. No worries. No worries. Thank you. So good to be here with you people all smiling and friendly. Stay like that. God bless you all. Thank you. Very much.